Well, hello. I'm in my classroom today. I, uh, doing some work. I had science Olympiad practice and, uh, doing some work. And after the success I had with, uh, another handheld video using a cell phone, I thought I'd just, just, just give you a tour of the place where I spend a lot of my day during the school year. So we'll call this my desk. Got my school computer. Uh, also had a lot of trouble over this break, just like my personal one. Uh, I have a Wacom tablet that I can use to write with. Uh, it's, it's wireless. Here's the little wireless dongle. The reason it's unplugged is these USB ports no longer work, and I'm told the motherboard is bad, so <laughs> that makes that whole wireless thing a little awkward. I do have one more USB over here that works, and that's what I'm going with. I have, uh, I've reviewed this product, a Baron Fig desk tablet, and then I put, I hate their sticky notes, but they do stick to Baron Fig paper. I just use it for note taking and brainstorming and stuff, and when it gets full, which it is, I rip it off and start over. Another product I haven't reviewed yet from Baron Fig, I just find these little weekly calendars really helpful to have on my desk. And of course my fountain pens, because I practice what I preach. I actually do use them. And some random resistors because of something I'm doing in my STEM class and then some work I'm working on that I hid because of student names. Over here, uh, I have my da uh, bookshelf. Lots of different books on it, reference books, notebooks, and so on. A little bit of tea stuff because I've cut way back on my coffee. That mug has the only coffee I'm allowed to drink today, so drink something else, including more herbal and green tea and so on. This is my failed experiment with a, an inbox. Uh, it, it's kind of at its maximum right now, but uh, you know how you're supposed to clean that out every day? Doesn't happen in my, my life. That's more of a every week thing. <laughs> and then uh, I always have my lesson plans up on the board written with uh, Noodler's Blue Erase and Black Erase in uh, Platinum Preppies, which is, if anybody is interested, might be a topic for me to do a video on. I do have a couple other boards in my room. That one is empty at the moment. And then uh, right beside my desk, we'll give you some geography here. I have a chemical room and some lays. Oh, sorry, before I go in there, behind my desk, that maybe disappearing soon uh, but file cabinet because still somewhat old-fashioned I have a Kanban board in here you now things that projects that I think I need to work on and so the in progress are ones I'm focusing on the done what I finished it's a nice visual of progress and as I come up with new things to work on I put them here and clearly I ran out of one tablet of sticky notes and had to switch to another one uh, in here, this is a chemical room. You can see chemicals. That door just does not shut. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, you know, lots of different chemicals. Proper safe chemical storage. I use the Flynn system. Not an advertisement, just what I use. Some lab coats. Extra chairs, mainly for conferences. Or that extra table you saw. Sometimes groups will work around that. And then... I want to know where everything is, so everything is labeled. That drying rack doesn't really fit anywhere, but back out go. from the chemical room. Give you a quick pan around. So yeah, that's my demonstration table. Um, the thing I want to point out, and I know it's going to catch everybody's eye, are two different things, but I have all the drawers labeled. Apparently I'm not real good at pushing them all the way in. My goal is to keep this clear. I have a Gixie clock here, which is kind of fun. I didn't say Nixie, I said Gixie. Uh, these run by LEDs through glass plates rather than the neon type wires. And I had this along. I'm probably going to take it home and finish it lab area. We're in the progress of doing a lab, so I have some stuff out. I like to keep the lab tables clear. Then uh, kids can work and they don't mess with stuff. That's other people's stuff, but this lab, the you just have to have some stuff out. Uh, another board. Uh, whoops, that was bad. 
<laughs> this table, because I have small, the smaller classes are all in the high school right now. We have larger classes coming up from the elementary, but for now, with smaller classes, I've been doing a lot of sorting. So this has been my sorting table. Right now I need to get the wires hung. And that's about it. The vinegar was out because I was using it. And then uh, more, more storage, probably not quite up to fire code, but as long as I can get away with it. And then uh, usually we'll have some projects there later for Science Olympiad and then more, mostly Science Olympiad on that shelf. Um, we're working on a lab, so I set the stuff out so the kids have access to it and then they put it back when they're done. So it doesn't go back quite as neatly as I want it, but if it's in the right place, I'm happy. And then once we're done with that lab, I put all that stuff away and it all has a place, carefully labeled. And kids can get in these drawers, of course, but they've gotten a lot better about putting things back where it's all supposed to be. So yeah, I just, you know, everything in its own container makes it easier to find, easier to put back where it belongs. You know, one of the exciting things for me has been getting a 3D printer. Uh, nothing printing right now that, now that I think about it, it would have been really cool to have something printing while I was filming this, but didn't think of it, so oh well. Uh, well. Lots of different filament. And I've kept a few toys over the years. Some of them are student printed projects, some of them are mine. You know, I had to print these neat gear clocks, or gear hearts. Sorry, this turns, it's really hard to do one-handed. I, I forget how many turns this one takes till it goes back to the heart shape. The yellow one takes fewer. Um, now, like I said, some of these are kid projects. One of them may be one of my projects. <laughs> um, my home state. I live somewhere up in that area. Oh, that was bad. My current state. See, it's not as flat as it looks. Uh, I live kind of down in this area. This is really hard to do with one hand. <laughs> Look back, that's where you come into my room. Never had to use the fire blanket, for which I am extremely grateful. I just realized I totally passed this by. This was made by my mother back when I first started teaching. Uh, she uses pastel. Doesn't, doesn't do as much art anymore, but uh, she's found other projects she's interested in. And by a student, I forget, was he a freshman or probably a freshman, but uh, I really liked it, so I kept it. We'll protect some identities. I, I pulled pictures out of there, uh, but I, I put up pictures of student activities and sometimes stuff going on in the classroom on the door. Uh, this is the back sides of the ones that are facing in the hall and then the ones facing in here you know, to look in here. So you're not looking at the backs of blank paper, but like I said, I'm protecting identity. We have another storage room. This one, there's a few things I'm still figuring out with it, So, but I'll give you a quick look. Yeah. I don't teach biology right at the moment. It's not really my degree area. I just am able to teach it because of course work I've done. But I just found this poster fascinating. Just, uh, what do you want to call it? The tree of life? <laughs> It uh, just shows how everything developed from the life right here in the middle, and then it, time expands in either direction to show the different varieties of life that, it, that developed from those first single cell storage organisms. room. There's some uh, magnetic markers that are refillable, and I do have bottles of ink to refill them. Uh, down here, another pro product I experimented with. These are also refillable, they refill one that's open. Yeah, here's one. It's empty right now. I'm probably going to have to refill it. They refill with a cartridge, but the nice thing is it's the same ink because it's the same company as the ones that hang on the board. The nice thing with these is you can replace the tip. Uh, the magnetic ones, I haven't found new tips. And these, I can just refill the cartridge, so it's all good. Uh, in this storage room, we do re recycle markers. Something I started, I did used to teach anatomy. I haven't taught it in many years, which is fine by me. It's not one of my favorites to teach, um, but have the anatomical dummy. And then kind of a mess. I don't really have a neat way to store this, but various miscellaneous science Olympiad supplies, a random telescope that uh, the school won and 
don't know what to do with it, but I've got one. <laughs> uh, I have more books, uh, some empty shelving, which I'm okay with some empty shelving. Uh, lots of cabinets. I try to keep the counters clear because this is actually a good place to store student projects when they're in progress, but I don't want the mess visible, so we hide it back here. And I said I drink more tea now that I've given up on coffee, so I've got a hot water heater. Some slide rules I would like to hang up again. Um, a distiller because I'm going to try and teach chemistry with the water we have here. And uh, I did a big pen giveaway. Uh, I was donated a bunch of pens, so there's the ink I used to refill them. Uh, you, you would think that that's going to take forever, but I did this a few years ago, a couple times with uh, the Pilot 1 liter, no, 750 milliliter bottle, and that actually went empty, so maybe these Pelican, Pelican 1 liter bottles will go empty. And again, lots of stuff, and if I label it, I know what's in it. And, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but everything is in its place. Yes, if you teach science, always keep a change of clothes. I have actually had to use that once or twice. And when you look out of my classroom, you look west over the football field, uh, the parking lot, and then you look toward the trailer court. Uh, depending on weather conditions, you can see some buttes back there. It's a, you know, some refraction in the atmosphere. But today we don't have those weather conditions. Uh, we, you can see the weather coming because we're looking west. And you get some really nice sunsets from here. Not, you know, the most inspiring view, but hey, there are some classrooms in this building with no windows. So not the newest classroom. Um, you know, this, this part of the building was built in the mid to late 1960s. The oldest part of the building, which is our lower elementary, was built in the 1950s. I uh, would love to see it renovated, but, you know, I have worked in worse, so <laughs> I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, I'm pretty well supplied, and uh, I look at what some rural schools, especially in other states, have to contend with, and not too much to complain about here, really. As I was standing here, I happened to think that's something that's new here in the last two years. Uh, when I started here, there was no air conditioning, and this room became an oven in the fall and in the spring. It was horrible to be in here, and so I've really appreciated that. In the winter, I us usually use it just as kind of a blower to help circulate air. And of course, we do have our regular heating system that it's been here since the late 1960s. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour. Um, it never looks perfect in here, but like somebody once told me, if the science room looks perfect and everything is in its place, then you're probably not actually doing any science. So I'll take that as good. When we're really busy, it gets messier. When we're not busy, it gets neater. So I try to keep it organized because having good bones behind it, you know, when I do that organization series eventually, um, Having a good system and good bones makes it a lot easier to stay closer to it and to get back to it. So anyway, I hope that was interesting. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.